All right, Pouring Nation, I get lots of questions about using house paints with acrylic pours. Generally, I tell new artists not to use house paint for acrylic pours, and I'll explain more about why in just a minute. However, if that is the only thing you have, absolutely you should still paint with it. I just don't think you get as bright of colors or as interesting effects as you do with glue, flow trawl, or traditional pouring mediums. Now, house paint gets used for some amazing acrylic pouring techniques like the Shelly Art Blooms and Swipes, and Sarah Taylor also uses house paints in her cloud type pours. And I think that's where a lot of these questions come from. But for you artists just starting out, those are very advanced pouring techniques that will take you way more time to master than something like a straight pour, tree wing pour, or a dirty pour. If you master more beginner friendly techniques and then move on to more difficult ones, like the Shelly Art Bloom Swipes and the pours Sarah Taylor does, you will have much more success than trying to start with those harder techniques. Another reason health paints are different than acrylics with traditional mediums is that latex paints are spongier than acrylic paints and acrylic paints mix with traditional pouring mediums. A food related comparison would be a mixed egg. If you mix an egg for one minute, you get a regular mixture. If you beat the egg for another two or three minutes, you get a fluffier version even though it's the same egg and it takes up a little more space. Latex is like the fluffy thick version of an egg and regular paint and medium is like the quick mixed egg. And when I say spongier, that's the same as the pillow that traditionally gets used for the Shirley Art Blooms. The reason they use it is because it holds the other paint up off the surface of the canvas and then allows the latex paint to move underneath the paints on top, thus letting you expand your bloom without disfiguring it as much as a regular tilt without a spongy base or a pillow base would do. The most common way people want to use latex paints is a base. The issue you'll have with that is the house paint generally has a bit more surface tension than regular acrylics. The more common things you see happen because of that are tons of cells or very large cells forming anywhere the regular acrylic sits on top of the latex paint and gets tilted thin. So that is usually the very edges of a pore. And in today's experiment, I'm gonna show you that effect. Okay, so what I've done here is I have three different kinds of house paint. All the whites are house paint. One is satin, one semi-gloss, one is gloss. And then I have a Arteza Burnt Sienna, which actually is a glossy paint when it dries. And then a Artist Loft Burnt Sienna, which actually is more matte when it dries. And with those, I did uh, one part paint, two parts flow trawl, and then water to consistency, and then just water with each one of those paints. Because I want to test each one of these in each one of my different house paints to see how they're affected. Now I did do a test here. I had to thicken up or uh, thin out my artist loft with flow trawl and my uh, gloss white. Uh, originally it didn't have any white in it. I added a teeny tiny bit of white just to make it more white rather than the, the base color. But I did add a little bit more water to those to get them the same consistency. So what we want to do here is again, we're going to put down a puddle of gloss, semi-gloss and satin, and then we're going to put each one of these different paints in each of those puddles. And I'm going to blow them out. And the same effect would happen if I used a white as a base, put the colors on top and then tilted when you get the very thin colors on the edge with the base latex paint, uh, this same effect will happen. I'm gonna put the satin on the bottom. And the reason I got the, the different textures of paint is because the texture is going to determine somewhat how much those cells that I talked about before. So that's the semi-gloss. And that's the gloss. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the two mixtures with flow trawls on the one on the right and the two mixtures with uh, just water on the left. And the reason I use flow trawl is flow trawl is a very matte medium. And so one side will be a very matte medium and one side will be whatever the paint is by itself. So the Arteza is a little bit more glossy and the Artist Loft is a little bit more matte. So this will be double matte, matte glossy, just matte and glossy. Okay. 
and you can tell the darker brown is the Arteza and the lighter brown is the Artislav. So first of all, an interesting thing you can see here is the Artist Loft is falling into the mediums. That means the Artist Loft Burnt Sienna is actually heavier than the Arteza. And if you want to get a general idea of how heavy a paint is, I have a table that I put together with some of the common acrylic paints that shows you the relative density, so how heavy that paint is compared to other paints, and I'll link that here and in the description below. So again, the easiest way for me to do this is I'm just gonna blow these out a little bit to kind of thin that paint on top to show you that effect. We're just gonna give that a minute and then we'll come back and check these out. All right, it's been a few minutes and my paper is starting to buckle, so I wanted to get in here before it really moves the paint in odd ways. And again, at the top here is my enamel gloss, and that's the Bear Premium 8300. Now the enamel is slightly different than the regular latex paint, which I'll show you here in a minute. The middle is the semi-gloss white, which is the classic color place interior paint. And the bottom is satin interior wall and trim paint, also from Color Place. So if you'll notice, we'll start with the satin. The satin, we got a lot of little bubbles coming out where the uh, paint kind of separated from the latex base. And the reason that happens, again, is the latex satin is going to be a little bit, have a little bit more texture. It's not going to be glossy and therefore it's gonna kinda of stick to the color paint on top. Now the semi-gloss, this is probably what a lot of you guys have seen, is the semi-gloss, it has the sheen to it, so it really pushes that paint. It stays together and pushes the paint away, especially where it gets really thin on the outside. You can see on the outside is really where all the, the cell action happens. And then it forces that acrylic paint on top to push together and then it kind of sinks in between where it's, it sinks on the side where it can go together and then it just kind of breaks up on the outside where there's not a lot of paint. So if you use a base coat of most house paints or latex paints, this is what you should expect on the outside. This is what happens a lot and that's why I don't generally have people use them unless you're trying to do something like Sarah Taylor where she takes advantage of this along with a couple other different paints to get that effect. And the last one again is the enamel gloss base. Now this paint is a little bit different than regular latex paint so you can see it didn't cause that as much but it's also a lot lighter. So look it came up and kind of took over kind of like how craft paints do. So um, that is one reason why this is a common base paint used for the Shelly Art because they want it to stay up on top of the rest of the paints and they want to get a nice glossy finish. Now if you're new to acrylic pouring and you want to start with a technique that will really help you jumpstart your pouring mastery, this is the video to watch next.